The Motley crew that is working the phone bank this hour is our own sales staff from the Lacrosse Media Group, and they are just yapping with each other over there. Let's put those people to work. Let's get some phones ringing over there. 608-784-5437. I see Tom Fail sitting over there. He's just you're laughing too much. I got to get you to you got to get to work. All right, send some calls Tom's way. 608-784-5437. Our broadcast today being brought to us by Kerry Heating and air conditioning. Our best advice on this is the 180 Club, which is an amazing thing. $15 a month for 12 months. That's all it takes. Think about $15, what you spend that on. This is a pizza and a half, less than two movie tickets probably, unless you go on their special night. But $15 a month, and you are helping kids all over in our area, kids and their families. Because remember, every dollar stays right here in our community with Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. That's what it's all about. So once again, give us a call on the Blood Center of Wisconsin phone bank, 608-784-KIDS, 784-5437. Can't get to a phone, but you're online today? You can donate at cmnhospitalsradiothon.com. Plus, go to our website to link over to the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals website. You can check out the auction, which is underway, and so much more. 608-784-KIDS, 784-5437 on our Blood Center of Wisconsin and phone bank today. Let's get the phones ringing. We're here till 6 today, 6 to 6 tomorrow, and 8 to 3 on Saturday. And once again, from our Dynamic Lifecycle Innovations Family Interview Area, here's Joni Smith. And thank you guys so very much back in the interview area on the Blood Center of Wisconsin phone bank. It's a lacrosse media group team. So they've already been taking calls, generous calls that have been coming in. Matt, thanks for being here. Tom, Ron, Keith, Lynn, Deb, Alicia. Kathy Van Vliet is here representing Ed and Sally Sullivan as well. <laughs> friends and friends for years of uh, Children's Miracle Network Hospital and the Radiothon. And Logan's mommy is here. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Let's hear it for Kelly. Now, Kelly, you've done double duty because you just came off the Blood Center of Wisconsin phone banks. How'd that go? Um, it was the Seven Rivers chapter of Credit Unions. Um, we were on the phone banks for an hour, raised over $2,000 for a CMN. Well, let's hear it for that. So tell me about one of the phone calls that you took personally this morning. I took a $1,500 personal call uh, from a gentleman in Trempolo, so that was phenomenal. And we just cannot believe that. I mean, it almost brings me to tears just to hear about that. And um, yeah, the generosity is just amazing. So Kelly, thanks for jumping into the interview area with us. We have a um, very special little guy to talk about. We have Logan to talk about. Mm -hmm. How's Logan doing? He's doing great. Tell us the story of uh, how Logan, I, this is just amazing because um, your husband was not in town when Logan came into the world. <laughs> Can you reverse the clock here and tell us how uh, that whole story got started? Sure. Well, uh, Logan was our first, so when you've never you know, been pregnant before, had a child, you really don't know what to expect, but what you definitely don't expect is to go into labor at 31 weeks, so. Um, 31 weeks. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so you're like not even thinking about baby coming for another nine weeks. So where is Lorenzo at this point? Um, so we own a trucking company, and he had one of our trucks in New York State. So it wasn't like he was just across the river. He was very far away. He was cross country. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happened with you? How did you know that uh, things are getting going and Logan may make an appearance? What happened? Oh, I was just having hip pain, and then, you know, for whatever reason, I just decided to start timing it, and it was, you know, within five minutes that I was feeling this pain I thought it was just kind of strange so I called a wonderful nurse named Michelle here at Gunderson and she convinced me to come in and um, in lieu of going to my tax appointment that I had that evening I did decide to go into the hospital probably and a good move yeah. now that you look back on it yep so yeah. they they found out that yep you know I was definitely in active labor of course I started bawling and uh, my in-laws were here immediately to give me the support that I needed. And um, after two bags of magnesium to try to stop the contractions, Logan came within four hours. So it was quick. What was going through your husband's mind at this time when he's across country and the place he wants to be is right here? I'm sure he was just scared and said a lot of prayers for us. How, how did it go with Logan coming in? How, how was he doing? 
Uh, well, he was taken away from me right away, and I wasn't able to see him. I needed to recover, and then they sent me over to postpartum. Um, I don't think we got to go back to see him for three or four hours after I gave birth, and he was in you know, one of the incubators. They have cute names for him, panda or giraffe. And, <laughs> um, he had the billy lights on him. There was just tubes all over the place, IVs all over the place, um, you know, monitors buzzing and people running around. So it's really scary. You don't really know the status, but he was there and he was breathing. So that's all that mattered to me at that time. So you were kind of robbed of that uh, first moment to hold your baby as soon as you have your baby. How long was it before you got to hold him? Uh, the next day. Okay. And what did that feel like? It was amazing. It was kind of surreal because while you're in postpartum with no baby listening to other mothers with their babies crying, that is like gut wrenching. Um, well, we've been talking, phone calls are coming in, <laughs> which is a great thing. And I think what we'll do is make sure that everybody knows the phone number to call. And that would be 608-784-KIDS. That's 5437. Okay. When did, when did your hubby get here? Oh, it took him, I think, like 28 hours later. He was here the following day. So he got back as soon as he can, but you still have to follow the law when you're driving. You know, big Yes, trucks. you do. <laughs> yes, you do. You want to get here safely. Uh -huh. So while you and I have been talking, I have a number now. We already have six calls in. That's great. And I think six calls. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to shoot for 10. Does that sound reasonable? Sure. 15 okay. All right. might, might be better. But okay. Well, well, whatever you want to do. So, Kelly, um... When did you get to go home? Uh, we were in the NICU for 30 days. 30 days. Yeah, a long time. So life probably gets put on hold. I mean, you're not going to the grocery store. You're not cleaning the house. You're not going to work. I mean, who who jumps in to help with all those <laughs> things? Children's Miracle Network. Um, you know, they provided us with meal vouchers. When you're worried about just this one little human um, they do something called CARES. So every three hours was our only opportunity to um, change his diaper or just touch him, take his temperature. Um, so when that's all you're focused on, you forget to eat. And so it's great that um, they provided us with vouchers so we could just go down to the cafeteria here at the hospital and didn't have to worry about leaving or not being able to get back um, to miss those CARES that, that were every three hours. Um, and you know, they've been with us every step of the way because Logan has had a little bit of an interesting journey outside of his NICU stay, um, you know, as of recently. Tell us about that. Um, well, he got a double ear infection this summer and he had lymph nodes swell up under his ears on both sides of his neck. They were the size of golf balls and the doctors didn't have any other word for him except impressive. Okay, so let's <laughs> just take one second here unless you're driving and feel the side of your neck. And sometimes you can feel those little lymph nodes. And you're telling me that a golf ball in your little guy and that's how big that lymph node was. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't even know. And that came from a double ear infection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So after. And that was so just this summer. Yeah. Yep. So, um, you know, he had his annual NICU follow up and they discharged him. He's doing fantastic. He is above where you would think that he would be for someone even his normal age, not just adjusted. Um, and so we were ecstatic. And then he <laughs> had this little setback. We found out he actually has a robust immune system. And so that was his body's immune response to fighting the infection. So we hope it's not going to continue to happen because, um, you know, we did have to surgically remove one of them. We couldn't get it to go down. Now, I know this is really hard on you, but if you can, if you can <laughs> get the strength to tell us a little bit what happened when Logan this summer came out of surgery. Can you share that with us? Um, if you've ever had a little one get put under anesthesia, it is awful. They wake up. They don't know where they are. They don't know where you are. They're so confused and disoriented, hungry because they can't eat for so long before they even go under. Um, he, he was just a bear, and there's nothing you can do to console him. So, gosh, those little red wagons <laughs> that CMN provides are great because once he finally woke up and we got to feed him that was his favorite thing was the little ride around the hospital wing in recovery as a mom and a dad what did that do for you that you couldn't help him and you couldn't explain to him what did that do I, it just breaks your heart you, you never you want to take their place you don't ever want to see your little one sick like that well you know what 
Logan is very special in a lot of hearts. We're looking for 10 calls. We're at seven. <laughs> We're at seven at 784, and the rest of the number is kids, 784-5437. Making these phone rings with the lacrosse media group. Why are you guys so quiet over there? <laughs> They're on the blood center of Wisconsin. You know, um, it, it's kind of a treat to, uh, to have our friends and our co-workers and our staff here today. And one of the first questions before they got on the phone bank was, where's the food? You know. So then we took them down the hall, and Subway has provided some breakfast sandwiches for everybody. And it's amazing how the sponsors get together to help out with this. It's a team effort. Mm -hmm. So you're at home. We're ready to get things rolling. It's a Thursday morning. Ready to pick up the phone to call in a pledge? Well, you know, we just haven't quite made up our mind. What would you do to help them out with that decision? Oh, gosh. Think of anyone in your family who, you know, has, has a little one um, and the love that you have for that little one. And then think about all the families that might not have their little ones at home with them that are battling the same things that I've battled, um, you know, where the little ones are still impatient, still fighting, still in NICU, still in uh, PICU. Um, you know, those families need your support. So, Kathy, yes. I have something for you. Do you know what an Irish twin is? Yes, there is. Okay, Kathy Van Vleter is saying babies that are born within a year. But not in the same pregnancy, like not children. Okay, but not in the same, okay. So, tell us about <laughs> new Miss Little Winnie. Yeah, so we've been talking about Logan all this time, but Logan actually has a little sister <laughs> already. Um, they were born 361 days apart. So Winnie, <laughs> Winnie was born January 16th of this year, and Logan was January 20th of last year. So I knew Kathy Sullivan Van Vliet would know <laughs> the answer to that. Something just told me that. So this is really fun because now you have two, and people think they may be twins. Yeah, already. Because mm -hmm. Winnie is... is Winnie had her nine month checkup yesterday and she's a little, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is funny. Okay. So we call her chunk butt, um, but Logan's starting to talk. So we can't call her that anymore. And now we call her baby T, which stands for baby tank. <laughs> she was in the 94th percentile for her weight. So her and Logan are in the same size diapers. That's handy. You just buy the same it's size nice. four, I right? We're in size know, I four. I just throw one yeah. size four in the, yeah, in the bag and I don't have to worry about two different diapers. Uh, same size clothes. Uh, she's catching right up to her brother. He was barely on the charts, you know, <laughs> all, this, all this last year. And now when he's going to pass them up, I think real soon. Well, congratulations to your amazing family. Thank you. Let's hope Logan gets through this cold and flu season without any incidents at all. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though we're going to wrap up our interview, we are not wrapping up that phone bank. We will keep it wide open at 784-KIDS. That's 784-5437. And we want to thank you so much, Kelly, for jumping in and uh, telling us the story. Is there anything else you'd like to end with? I think we pretty much covered it, haven't <laughs> Thank we? Thank you. Thanks for the time. You're listening to the Children's Miracle Network Radiothon, a service of the Lacrosse Media Group. Oh, yeah. Let's keep the phones going. 608-74-KIDS, 784-5437, 608-784-5437. We did real good. Let's keep them ringing this hour. Our gang from the Lacrosse Media Group, they're over there. They're working hard on the phone bank. Our sales department is over there. I want to keep them working just as hard as they are right now. So let's get it going. 608-784-KIDS, 784-5437 on our Blood Center of Wisconsin uh, uh, phone bank over there on the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals Radiothon.